Let's take a quick look at the Simplified Quality Matters 8 standard rubric and look at what we're starting with in terms of our mini course. So I'm going to go to the content tab and start with the course prep overview and download the Simplified Quality Matters rubric and we'll pop that open. So standard one has to do with whether the student is introduced to the course and given instructions on how to get started. So let's look at the course homepage, and this is where most of your students will be coming in. There's a welcome message and it introduces the student to the purpose of the course, but it doesn't actually instruct the student how to get started. So that's one thing we're going to want to look at. And uh, we're going to want to direct the student to the content tab and have the student introduce themselves. So let's go to the content tab and see if there's an introduce yourself assignment in the beginning. So course information, we have syllabus, we have an introduce yourself discussion. So there is one of those. So let's move on to standard two. And standard two has to do with um, learning objectives. We call them learning outcomes here at PCC. And learning outcomes can be course level, that's for the entire course, or they can be unit level or module level, um, which is one for each module. And to be well designed, the course really needs to have both. Now at PCC, our course level learning outcomes come from a CCOG, Course Content Outcome Guidelines document. And uh, Often they, they will either be in the syllabus or in a separate page in the course information module. So let's look for the learning outcomes here. So here are the course level learning outcomes for the mini course. Um, having reviewed college guidance on copyright, identify key principles, identify services, and given several scenarios, identify whether or not, and so on. Now, for writing learning outcomes, if you're in a position where you're going to be creating a new course from scratch and running it through the curriculum committee, um, there are some guidelines on um, how to write course level learning outcomes. And there's some current discussion going on about exactly the format that um, learning outcomes should be in. But um, for quality matters purposes, the important part is that each of these outcomes should be observable and measurable. So for example, identify key principles of copyright, including fair use in the Teach Act. There should be some sort of assessment where I can actually observe whether this outcome is being met or not. Same with identifying services available at the college. There should be an assignment or an assessment where I can observe whether that learning outcome is being met or not, and so on. So let's look at the unit level learning outcomes or module level learning outcomes. And we'll go to module one and we see there's a module one intro. And this has learning outcomes right at the top. So the learning outcomes for module one are to identify key principles of copyright and identify services available at the college to assist with copyright issues. So these learning outcomes for the module should align with the learning outcomes for the course. In other words, I wouldn't want to have a learning outcome here that didn't actually support the course level learning outcome in some way because I would be teaching the student things that they weren't expected to learn to satisfy the learning outcomes for the course. Once again, these module level learning outcomes should also be stated in ways that are directly observable and measurable. So I should have an assignment and an assessment that's tied to each of these learning outcomes in this module. Let's look at module two, and we see there's no intro. Go to the first item, and it's some notes on applying copyright. So here we're not meeting standard two because we're not explaining to the student what they're going to be learning in this module. So one of the tasks that we're gonna to have to do to fix the course is to create some learning outcomes for the module, and also a list of instructions to the students on how they can work through the module in order to accomplish those learning outcomes. Standard three has to do with assessment and measurement. And in Desire to Learn, there are three main tools that we're going to be using for assessment and measurement. So there's discussion groups where we have the students write 
um, uh, posts to a discussion board having to do with a particular con uh, topic. So for example, here's a copyright scenarios activity where the student is asked to, um, to comment on three different copyright scenarios. There's a Dropbox where students can write assignments and upload those files to the Dropbox so we can assess their work. And there are quizzes that the student can complete online and uh, be assessed. Now the quizzes can have everything from simple true-false questions, multiple choice, um, multiple select. They can have matching problems in them. They can even have long answer, or short answer problems, which are basically essays that you are going to manually grade. It's up to you as an instructor to select the assessments that are going to support your learning outcomes. Now, one of the important concepts in Quality Matters has to do with something called alignment. Alignment states that any learning materials you provide to the student, um, any learning activities that you ask the student to do, and any assessments that you perform on student work should align with the learning outcomes. And some of these alignment issues are fairly straightforward. For example, if you're teaching a course on copyright, you wouldn't expect the student to um, be assessed on their knowledge of video. Similarly, if you're teaching a, uh, a course on video, you wouldn't necessarily expect your students to do well on an assessment about student services. So the subject matter should align, but then maybe less obviously, the level of task that you're asking the student to do should also be in alignment with the learning outcomes. So for example, I teach a lot of programming courses, and so most of my assessments have to do with the students actually writing computer programs. It wouldn't be appropriate in my class to ask the student to answer a bunch of essay questions as the only assessment for whether they were mastering the learning outcomes. I want to be able to test that they're programming. If you're teaching a writing course, then it wouldn't be appropriate to ask the student to just do multiple choice questions on exams in order to demonstrate that they had mastered your learning outcomes in writing. So we're going to be concerned with making sure that these assessments are testing the right things, testing what we need the student to know to master the learning outcomes, but also making sure that the level of intellectual behavior that the student is being asked to exhibit actually matches the level of intellectual behavior that the learning outcomes are requiring, and that that is appropriate for the level of the course.